Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn to Luke chapter 11. So we're going to begin at verse 5. Uh, as we do so, as you're turning there, I want to pray for our children as they're getting ready to leave. We're so glad that they're here. They're our all-stars. Let's give our children a big round of applause. We just love them. Thank you. And thank you, Brother Zach Brown. So glad to have Zach Brown and uh, uh, worship with us today. And he's here this whole month. And uh, hopefully we're going to uh, just soak them up for the time being. But let's pray for our, our kids this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our children and Miss Melanie and all of our awesome uh, children's workers and nursery workers. We just pray your special blessing upon them. And as they've received the word through song today, I pray that they've been encouraged, uh, lifted, and Lord, that you would begin to soften their hearts to come to know you as Lord and Savior. And we look forward, God, to how you're going to raise them up as we work together uh, in teaching them the word to be future leaders here in America and around the world. May you bless them and anoint them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look together at Luke chapter 11, uh, verses uh, 5 and following. If you uh, are physically able, if you'll continue to stand in honor of God's word. The Bible says, And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey. And I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within. Do not bother me. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is a friend, uh, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened uh, to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. Our Heavenly Father, bless the reading of his word, and let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being a faithful Father, whom we can always count on no matter what. I pray today, Lord, as we know that you are faithful, help us today, Lord, to look to you when our future is uncertain. Help us today, Lord, to look to you when our country, Lord, is looking for leadership, Lord, help us today in our personal lives, Lord, when we're wondering who can we lay our burdens uh, down upon, who can we give our problems to, Lord, we know it's you. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. I ask, God, that you would uh, use me today to be your mighty vessel, to preach forth your perfect truth. May we find assurance and peace in your faithfulness today, and may we learn, God, to be people of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Two weeks ago, on a Saturday afternoon, at around 2.30 in the afternoon, got a ring at the doorbell that was unexpected, wasn't prepared, and our family was in total disarray. All the kids were upstairs, my wife was upstairs, and I was downstairs on the couch asleep with my mouth open, with drool running down both sides of my mouth with bedhead sticking up. I looked like the bedhead fairy had come to see me. And my wife yells down to me, Mark, get the door. And I thought, maybe if I just continue to rest here, that the person that's at the door will go away. Now, I know you've never thought that before at your house, but I thought that. And I waited, and the doorbell rang again. And I waited, and the doorbell rang again. And I waited, and the doorbell rang one more time. And finally I said, I've got to get up because this person is not going to stop ringing the doorbell until I open the door. And so I did. I opened the door, being very uh, unpleasantly looking, with my hair sticking up, with still drool running down my face. And I opened the door, and who was it? It was a new friend of ours named Barbara, and she had brought a picture for Sharon Tron that she wanted us to give to her when we saw her next. And so, gladly, I took the picture, very embarrassed of my appearance. I brought the picture in and put it on the table, and uh, Miss Sharon, I hope you got your picture just the other day. Good, good. Um, the point was that I would have never opened the door if she were not persistent, Barbara wasn't, in ringing the doorbell. 
The point I'm trying to share with you today, as Jesus points out in this beautiful parable here today, that we ought to be persistent when it comes to our praying. Just as we have neighbors and friends that are persistent in ringing the doorbell, Jesus has a lesson for us to learn that we're to be persistent in our prayers, not to give up. Because so many of us have prayed once or twice about some need in our life. And after not hearing from God, we said, I just forget it. God doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. He's forgotten about my request. Are you guilty of feeling that way today? Have you had that thought process? Are you here today thinking that God has forgiven or forgotten about you? Maybe something that you are praying about. What is prayer? Well, we need to define that this morning as we continue here this morning, because God wants us to be people of prayer. And in order to be people of prayer, you got to know what prayer is. I like what Dr. Ronnie Floyd says in his book, How to Pray, on page six, uh, on what prayer is defined as. He says, prayer is the means by which we can know God and his will for our lives. He says, prayer is our means of communication with God. And he goes on one other thing and says, prayer is also the way we have spiritual power. And and I would agree with everything that Dr. Floyd says uh, in regards to prayer. It's our way of communicating with God. It's our way of communing with God, being in fellowship with Him. And it's our way of uh, receiving spiritual power that we don't have in our own natural strength. And as he says in his book, the greatest power or prayer veteran who modeled what prayer was all about is someone we know His name is Jesus Christ. And that's what we see here in Luke chapter 11. Uh, And and as we do so, there's a parable here that Jesus points out. And in this parable, it's a mighty parable uh, about a persistent neighbor. And this persistent neighbor knocks on uh, a friend's door at midnight. And as he does so, he asks for bread that he needs to serve to a guest. He He has a guest at his home that is hungry. He has no bread in his home. So he comes to the neighbor's home and he knocks on the door asking for help. The man's reluctance is understandable. Why? Well, looking at historically at uh, the homes in Jesus' day, did you know that common homes in Jesus' day were just one room and with one window and they only had one door? The first two-thirds of the room was a dirt floor where the animals slept for the night. The other third of the room, back third, was a raised wooden platform with a um, charcoal stove where the entire family would sleep. And so for this man to get up at midnight, he would have to awaken his family. He would have to awaken the animals. He would have to step over the animals, which would be very inconvenient, go to the door, open the door and welcome the guest. It would be a big burden. It would be a major headache. It would require great effort. However, Jesus points out here that just as we learn that this persistent neighbor who keeps knocking on the door will not stop, we know as well that the friend who comes down um, out of his a third of the area where the charcoal stove was, waking up his family, stepping over the animals, and going to all the trouble to open the door, that it's a picture of our Heavenly Father that says that if we will be persistent in our prayers, God will answer our prayers according to His glory, and that He will answer our need according to the needs of our life, and that God is faithful, and that we're not to give up. We're to be persistent in praying because God is faithful. We can trust in God. We can believe God. Why? Because he is a loving father. And and this parable teaches us that Jesus reminds us here that first that the man inside the house as he was asleep, as the persistent neighbor kept banging on the door, we learned that it's important for us when it comes to praying that we keep praying. We don't give up. We keep praying no matter what 
the, the, the requirement is to keep praying is. And what is that? Well, God says to get on our knees. He says that we can stand. He says that we can look to him with our eyes open. We can close our eyes. We can pray while we're driving down the road. It doesn't matter our posture. The point is that we've got to keep praying. And the first point I want to share with you from this parable that we can learn is that when we pray, we can pray with confidence because God is not irritated when we come to him. He is not irritated when we come to him. Look back at the passage for just a moment. It says there in verse 5, um, we see there that it says, Which of you um, has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. The word which there, it's an interrogative referring to someone or something. The word you, it refers to the person. The word friend there, it means loved or dear or befriended. The word go means to move from one place or another. The word midnight means midpoint of the night. The word say means to utter words or to convey information. The word friend means to be dear or to be uh, befriended. The word lend, it means to furnish by a loan. And the point is, as we look at that from the, the Hebrew text, it's pointing out for us today that we can pray with confidence because God is faithful to meet our needs. We can count on him when we can't count on other people. We can count on him when we can't count on the politicians in our world. We can count on him when we can't count on our neighbors to always come through. We can count on him when we can't count on our family members to come through. We can count on him when we can't depend on our, our, our wife or our husband or our children to do things. We can always count on God because He is there to help us in our time of need. And he is not irritated when we come to him. The word irritated here, we get it from the word troubled. Uh, The word troubled here. uh, And and as the persistent neighbor kept knocking on the door, we learn here that as the the friend's neighbor, as he comes uh, out of his bed, waking up his family, coming out down off of the loft, where the animals are, waking them up, waking his families up, it shows us here that he would be irritated. He would be troubled, but not your heavenly father. He's not irritated. Do you ever get irritated? Uh, It reminds me of the definition. Irritation or irritation is the state of feeling annoyed, impatient, or slightly angry. Do you ever get slightly angry? I get angry or irritated when my kids Uh, my youngest three, when it's time for bed, after I I have washed them, brushed their teeth, helped them put on their pajamas, and as it's time to go to bed, and I ask them, do you have your room clean? Oh, yeah, Dad, we got it clean. We go into the room, they get in their bed, and there's toys still all over the floor. That irritates me. What irritates you? Maybe standing in a long return line at one of the department stores that just keeps going and going and going, and there's only one cashier there taking care of your needs and minds. Doesn't that irritate you? Or what about when you go into a uh, food store or a fast food restaurant, and you come out and you notice on your door that somebody's dinged the side of your door and didn't tell you about it because they were in a hurry? It seems to be uh, a, a modern tattoo for most of us living in Marietta and Atlanta for our vehicle. Irritation. We learn here that God doesn't get irritated when we put our request before him. Remember Exodus 34, 6, it says, when God gets angry, we learn that it takes a remarkably slow time for him to get there. The Bible tells us in Exodus 34, 6, that God is provoked to anger, but he is never irritable. John Bloom tells us that in his article, Desiring God, that God does not get irritated based on that scripture. He gets angry, but he doesn't get irritated. And when it comes to being a child of God, he cares for you. He desires to help you. He wants to take care of your every need. And that's why we have to pray to him. So as we learn from this parable, God doesn't get irritated, uh, but yet he loves us. Remember Psalms 103.8 that tells us that the Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's the God we have who loves you and loves me. We know as Psalms 86, 15 tells us that he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. 
And so we are to approach God, not scared and trembling and fearful, but know that he's our loving heavenly father. And as he knows our needs before we even speak them, he desires to have that relationship, that communion with you, that special time. And so that's why it's important for us to be people of prayer. Remember, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. That means that you and I are not to be praying like that means that we don't do anything else the rest of the day, that we stay on our knees. No, but that we have a mindset of prayer, that we lay, are laying up our knees before the Lord, our, our desires. We're also praying for our loved ones, our friends, our church, your pastor, your family. We're to be praying throughout the day, having those things and on our mind, but we are to be active doing other things. And, and remember, as we do so, we're to be faithful in our prayers and not give up. I think so many of us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ that we, after coming to know Christ as our Lord and Savior, after we've made a request or two to the Lord in our prayer life and things didn't go so well or he didn't answer them automatically, we give up. We throw in the towel and we say, you know, God just does not answer prayer. When I'm here today to tell you that he does answer prayer. And he does desire for you to have that communion with him. And the Bible commands us in Galatians 6, 9, that we're to not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, the Bible says that we will reap if we, will do, if we do not give up. Don't give up on God. Trust him. Follow him. Pray to him. And see that he will answer your needs according to his divine purpose. So understand, we can pray to the Lord with confidence because he doesn't get irritated when we pray to him. Secondly, we can pray with confidence because God is able to meet our needs. He's able to meet our needs. We learn here in verse 5, the Bible tells us there that the, the uh, neighbor asks the friend after he opens the door, he says, friend, lend me three loaves. Uh, the, the need is that, that he has a neighbor that is hungry or a guest at his, at his house, and he can't feed him. So he's got to have some food to feed him. He must have been a Baptist. Can I get a witness on that? But if he were a true Southern Baptist, he'd have asked for fried chicken, right? But we learned here he's asking for a need. What's the need? Food, bread. The, the point is that we can pray with confidence because God is always able to meet our needs. We can't put no confidence in the flesh, as Philippians 3.3 3 says, because it will cause us to go astray. It will cause us to trip up. We can't put our faith in our flesh or in anyone else's because people will fail you uh, and you and I will fail one another, but God will never fail you. You can always trust him because God is faithful. As the Bible says, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's never changing. We've got politicians that change. We've got neighbors that change. We've got family members that move locations and change. But God never changes. And with knowing that, we can put our confidence in him. We don't put our confidence in evil. Proverbs 14, 16 says that a righteous man departs from evil, but a fool rages in his confidence. Fun in the flesh only lasts for a little while. We can't put our confidence in the flesh. We've got to put our confidence in the Lord. Now, why do we do that? Because Ephesians 3, Paul says in verse 20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more, far more uh, than we can ask or think, according to the power that works in him, to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning for you and I, we're going to go to the one who can do all things, the one who can do the impossible, the one who is the great I am, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the one who can raise the dead, the one who can cause the, the deaf to be able to hear, and those that can't speak to speak. We're going to go to the one who can solve your problems and my problems. We're going to go to the great Jehovah, the great I am, Jesus Christ himself. That's the one we're to go to in our time of need. Because when we do so, my friends, we're going to see, just as the pesky neighbor did, that as we keep there asking and putting our need before the Lord, that the door is going to come open, that God is going to meet our need, and how beautiful and how glorious and how wonderful it is. 
also understand this, that we must understand that when we pray, that God doesn't answer every uh, prayer request that we have according to our own desire. Because some of you in here are guilty of praying a prayer that says, Lord, I just want to be a millionaire. Can you please help me be a millionaire? And it never happened. For some of you, that may be God's plan for your life. Praise be to God for you. But for others, and for the most of us, God's plan is not for us to be a millionaire or to be a billionaire. God wants us to be faithful. We must understand that some of us have prayed uh, ridiculous prayers like, Lord, could you please give me 10 cars in my driveway? or seven boats, or three condominiums. I, you know, we've prayed these ridiculous prayers that God says no to. Sometimes in our prayer life, we must understand, God says yes. Sometimes he says no. And when he says no, we must understand that as our Father, eternally, he knows what's best, and we are to trust him knowing that he knows what's best, and that he has our Best interest at heart. Sometimes God says to us, you need to wait. I, I'm going to answer that, but you need to wait. And, and that in that waiting period, it's where we grow in our Christian maturity. It's in that waiting period that God really sees if we are faithful uh, in seeking him out and trusting him and in following him. And God would say to us today, we got to be faithful in our prayers because there's no limitation in what God can do. But we must understand that God is always faithful. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says wait. Sometimes he says no. But through all circumstances in our life, we're to persistently pray to the Lord because God is faithful. And as we understand that today, my friends, may we take that step forward and continue to pray to the Lord. Remember we got to be realistic. There are times that we don't understand when we pray to the Lord that he answers according to his will. And even though we don't understand, as Isaiah says, remember that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we're to trust him no matter what. Remember in uh, the Bible where we learn about John the Baptist as he was in prison. And as he was so discouraged and down, as a messenger came to him and uh, he said, he wanted to send word back to Jesus. He said, are you the coming one or should we look for someone else? And as we know that Jesus is the coming one, John the Baptist was so discouraged. And in that moment, if I could have write, wrote, uh, written history there, I would have freed John the Baptist from prison and set him free so that he could preach for many, many more years for the glory of God. But that wasn't God's will for John the Baptist. John the Baptist, unfortunately, he was beheaded. He became a martyr for the Lord Jesus for an explanation that I can understand. But it was for the glory of God. When as well, when Jesus predicted Peter's denial, remember, we thought and I thought that it would be right uh, to pray that Peter not sin at all. But Jesus didn't pray that. Remember that he prayed that after Peter had sinned and was restored, that he would strengthen his brothers, as Luke 22, 31 and 32 reminds us there. That, in other words, that God used those trials and tribulations and those failures that Peter had in his life to make him uh, the man that he was, to make him a rock. And God would use him to become a powerful preacher after he learned through those failures and those hardships in his life. God knows what he's doing. We must understand that and faithfully, persistently pray no matter what. God knows what he wants to do in your life and what he wants to do in mine. We must remain faithful because God is faithful. And even when we're faithless, God remains faithful. And as he does so, may we continue to pray faithfully to him. As well, remember here, we must do as David did in Psalms 118 and verse 8. The Bible says, as David said, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. He says, in other words, those who trust in government, those who trust in finances, those who trust in other people or themselves will be disappointed in the end because every one of those institutions will let you down, but not the Lord himself. He is always 
faithful. Psalm 16 is an ex- excellent example of David's confidence in the Lord. And, and he's our high priest, he tells us there. He's our intercessor and that we can go to him and approach the throne of grace with confidence so that he will meet our need according to his grace and to his mercy because God is great. My friends, I want to encourage you today. Put your confidence in the Lord. Thirdly, because God encourages us to be persistent. We can pray with confidence because God encourages us to be persistent. We see here in verse 9, the Bible says, I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. What we understand here is that in Jesus' story, that the neighbor gets up despite all this. The rudeness, he still gets up. The inconvenience, the neighbor still gets up. The, the breach of the social custom because of uh, this uh, neighbor would not stop knocking. He gets up. And as he does so, the, the Bible tells us there that he simply, as the neighbor keeps knocking on the door, he wouldn't go away until the man gives him what he wants. And so as the doors open, the good friend gives him the bread and the neighbor satisfied so that he can go and feed his friend and the need is met. The point again is telling us as Jesus concludes, he says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. We learn here, looking back at the text here, that it says in this text, ask. The, the, uh, he, the Greek word there, it means to seek by the inferior to the superior, meaning that the, the one who's asking is a beggar, Uh, to the giver. We're looking to God to be the giver. And as he's the one who has all the treasures of the earth and of the heavens, that we're going to him because he's the giver. Why do we pray to God persistently? Because God gives. So we're going to trust in him. And then we we learn as well that the scripture tells us there to, uh, to seek. That word means to look for or to strive to find. To seek God means to turn to him, to strive humbly and sincerely to follow him faithfully. That's what we're to do. We're to ask. We're to seek. That means it means we're going to after the Lord. And then we learn here, he says that we're to knock. It means to continue to make a noise at the entrance of the door. Exhaustively that you don't give up, that you spend all your energy there knocking And putting forth the effort so that the Heavenly Father hears your request. But again, too many of us uh, do what uh, I would call a childhood or childlike faith. Where we would be like a four-year-old kid at the door. They would knock one time and run off. They would knock one time and leave the scene. But that's not what our prayer life should be like. The Bible tells us there that we're to keep asking, we're to keep seeking, we're to keep knocking. And even when times are tough and difficult, we're to keep praying and we're to keep asking and we're to keep seeking. When we don't see the door, we got to keep asking. When we got to keep seeking, when we don't see the answer, we got to keep asking. We got to seek, keep seeking. We got to keep knocking. We got to keep putting forth the energy because sooner or later, the door's going to come open and God's going to answer the prayer and you're going to say, Praise be to God. You have faithfully answered my prayer. We've prayed many things here in the life of our church. And one, I could go all day talking to you about some of them. But one that has just spoken to me over this year that's been very difficult is with Mary Lou Bouchelle's brother, Danny. We've prayed for him for over a year. It's been years that we've prayed for him. And when we began praying for him, he wasn't a believer. And God softened his heart as he had cancer and still has cancer. But through that tragedy and through that hardship, praise me to God. God has strengthened me and encouraged me in my own faith because we've learned that just recently, just two days ago, as we've been praying, as this cancer kept getting bigger and, and spreading more rapidly in his life, we've been praying and praying and praying and praying. We got word that that cancer is in recession, that the tumor is shrinking. And we understand as the doctors have no explanation. I know who has answered that prayer. It's God himself. And praise be to God for what he's done. 
And the same God that has changed Danny's life as he now gives glory to God as he's had a change in his life, he can do the same thing for you and you and you and me. Praise be to God for him being a God who answers prayer. So he tells us to seek him. He says to ask him to knock and the door will be open. So I want to encourage you today to do just that, to keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And as you do so, see that God can do the impossible. We see finally that we can pray with confidence because blessings follow persistent praying. We can pray with confidence because we see that blessings follow persistent praying. Look at the Bible in verse 10. It says, for everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. And the encouraging thing for you and I today, as we look back at the text there, it says there the word opened. It, it means spoken of a closed door by a cover. And the beautiful thing here is you want to highlight or underline that word open. What happens when we pray? The door comes open open. What happens when we persistently pray that the, 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 the door that was closed, that is bolted shut, it becomes open. And it's plural here, meaning, or in past tense, meaning that the door, as we've prayed, that it is spoken of here as it was closed by a cover, as the picture says here. It's like a, a clay pot that has a lid on the top of it, that as it was closed, we understand that now uh, the picture is given that it's opened up. And it's speaking here of the clay pot being open. And picture here is Matthew 2.11 of when the Magi came before Jesus as he was just a little babe. And as they came before the Lord there, that as they came into his presence, their hearts were changed, their lives were moved, and they presented treasures to Jesus gold and frankincense and myrrh. And that same beautiful picture as these were rare treasures that they gave to God. The same picture is given to you and I as a believer to be an encouragement to us that when we pray, that when we persistently pray, that God of the universe, the giver of life, that he has the opportunity to open up the treasures of this world for you and I and that there is nothing impossible with God. And that's why we pray, because every time we pray, we're prone and in line to receive a miracle. But if you don't pray, guess what? God ain't going to bless you as if you pray. And I want to encourage you today to do just that. Why? Because we see that God can do the impossible. God wants to do the impossible, and God wants to bless you. Now, again. I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here. I'm not telling you that if you pray and that you just keep praying that you want all the gold in the universe, it may be God's will for you, but I don't believe it is. Because if he, if he does give you all the gold, he's going to require of you of a good steward to give it back so that you can help those that are in need. But I am here to tell you this, that when you pray, the impossible can happen because with God, all things are possible. And it's my prayer today that you will begin to pray in the Lord and that you will see the results as you continue to pray. Speaking of results, just yesterday, it was freezing at my house. I don't know if it was cold at your house, but it was freezing at my house. And a few days beforehand, um, I had gone to the grocery store and I wanted to be a good dad. So I got some Swiss Miss hot cocoa mix. Can I get a witness on that? I didn't get the big jug of it. I got the individual packets. I believe there's 50 packets in a, in a box there. And uh, it was with good intentions. I knew that the weather was going to be cold that on Saturday morning, when the kids got up, that they could take one of those individual packets and crack them open, put some hot water in there and stir it up and have some good old hot cocoa with marshmallows. And if you've never had hot cocoa, you need to try it. It's good stuff. It really is. But on this particular day, as being a busy dad on Saturday, I uh, told my kids where the hot cocoa mix was, and I didn't monitor them getting into the hot cocoa mix. I just, you know, thought, they're going to be all right. Get one or two packets, and they'll drink it and be on their way. I'm going to tell you what, I am not a good earthly father. 
Because given an hour's time after I'd gotten through, they had put a major dent in that box of Swiss Miss hot cocoa mix. They all had rings around their mouth about the hot cocoa they had. And I'm telling you, they were like live ping pong balls after drinking all that hot cocoa. We couldn't have enough handcuffs in the house to keep them sitting in their seats. The results, that's what happens when you drink too much hot cocoa. It's not good for your kids to drink that much hot cocoa. One or two packets is fine, but not 30. And I didn't have an exact count, but it seemed that many that they had drank when I reaped the, the, the evidence of them being in their house. And the point is this. Thank goodness that I'm not your heavenly father. Because as much as I love you and I'm looking out for the needs of your life, I get busy. I get distracted. And I don't have time to watch every single need that you have in your life. I pray for you and love you, but I am nothing like Jesus. Jesus is our Heavenly Father. He knows our every need before we even utter them out of our mouth. He knows every need in your life this morning. He knows your hurts. He knows your struggles. He knows what you're feeling this morning. And he He's got the cure. He's got the answer. He wants to help you today. But you've got to persistently pray. You've got to ask. You've got to seek. You've got to knock. You've got to be like that neighbor that keep knocking on that door until it comes open. But when it comes open, look out because God will release the treasures of heaven and blessings will come to those who are faithful. What happens when we pray? It's my prayer of my friends that we will pray with boldness and that we will be, uh, as we pray like Moses, that as we pray that God will give us boldness to be able to be a leader among his people. It's my prayer that as we pray that we will be able to pray like Elijah and as we do so that we see the fires of heaven come down as he prayed for uh, God to, to deliver him from the prophets of Baal. It's my prayer as we pray that we will pray like Ezra so that as he held the word of God before the people there, that after he prayed, the Bible tells us that the people fell on their faces, that they, they were repenting before the Lord, they were praying and they were tithing and God was getting the glory there. It's my prayer that we will pray like Nehemiah, that after he was praying, that he was broken before God and that he would never be the same after he prayed to the Lord himself. I pray as well, no matter what, that when we get into those impossible situations, those hardships, those difficulties, that we'll be like Daniel in the midst of the lion's den, that as we pray, that we know that the God of the impossible, as we call upon him, that he can shut the lion's mouth. And it's my prayer today that he will shut the lion's mouth in every one of your lives with the difficulties and struggles that you're dealing with. And as you pray, may God do the impossible. Because, my friends, we need God back in America today. We need, Amer we need God in our church. We need God in our personal lives. We need God in our families. We need God in our community. We need God back in, on the throne and in the classrooms. We need God in every part of our lives, my friends. So may we all pray that the God of the impossible will open up the treasures of his world and may revival come to our nation. May you today... Receive God's blessing as you persistently pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us today how much we need you. And Lord, we have those today who are among us who are non-believers. And they've come for the first time or they've been coming for a while but have never trusted you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, as we've learned today that you have commanded us to pray without ceasing. And as we have a mindset of praying daily, being persistent, that as we pray, you can do the impossible in our lives. There are some here today, Lord, that would love to have peace in their life. And they've realized that it only comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, the way to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, if we desire that as we feel you leading us in that direction, as 1 John 1, 9 says, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There are many here this morning who need to be cleansed, who need to be washed, 
who need to come to know you as Lord and Savior. We have as well those among us who are elementary in their faith. They've trusted you as Lord and Savior. But Lord, as they've made a request or two to you, and you didn't answer it promptly or according to the way that they thought, they made a judgment call that you don't love them. And we know, Lord, as 1 John tells us, that God is love. You demonstrated it on the cross. Lord, uh, you've made a way for us to have you as our Lord and Savior. And as many have realized that today, I pray, Lord, that their prayer life would become alive. And, Lord, that they would ask, they would seek, they would knock. Many here this morning go out, have uh, private struggles, problems in their marriage, problems in their personal life, trouble at work. God, the bottom line is we all need you. And so many of us have had silent mouths, Lord, keeping things to ourselves. And today, you've caused an eruption in our hearts, Lord, to cry out to you, to begin to ask, to begin to seek, to begin to knock. We come to you, Lord, as a people in need of you and our nation. When things are uncertain, we know, God, you're always faithful. Help us today, Lord, if we need to come to the altar and pray. Pray for ourselves. Pray for our, our marriages. Pray for our families. Pray for our nation. May we come. Lord, do the impossible. Show up and show off today as we commit ourselves to you. We surrender to you. Lord, as we ask, as we seek, as we knock, speak to us now. May we have the boldness to step forward. May you get the glory. May our lives be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, I'm going to be here at the front. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I'm sure the Lord speaking to your heart.